Oh, so you want to take the MSF course. In this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know so that you're prepared and will pass the MSF course no problem. I took the course just a few months ago and I passed the writing portion with a perfect score and I only got one question wrong for the multiple choice test. So while everything is still fresh in my head, I wanted to share some tips with you guys that no one seems to be talking about that will help you pass. This video will be broken up into three parts. The first part will cover what they test you on as you ride the bike. The second part will cover the multiple choice test. And the third part is about preparation and what to bring because you are required to bring your own gear. So why even take the MSF course? Well, in some states it's required and in the states that it's not, it's still good to take it so you have basic rider knowledge and then you get a motorcycle endorsement out of the course if you pass. So the Motorcycle Safety Foundation course is broken up into three days. The first day takes place in the classroom where you go over basic knowledge of how to ride a motorcycle and the rules of the road. All this info comes from this booklet that they give you and that you'll be able to keep. Just wanted to note that all the questions on the multiple choice test at the end are covered in this book. Day two is half classroom work and the other half of the day is spent on the bikes learning how to ride. Now this is where you'll get to be on the bikes for the first time. You'll go over how to turn on the bike, the friction zone, and how to shift gears. Day three is where it gets more advanced and it's the day you're going to get tested on everything. So the first half of the day will go over teaching you the more difficult skills like figure eights, turning at high speeds, sharp turns, and after practicing that for a bit they will start the skills test where you go one by one and get scored. Now after that you return to the classroom and take the multiple choice test and then find out if you pass the course. Now I know that sounds like a lot but don't get overwhelmed. I'm going to go over some key things to help you out. Besides the basic maneuvers like using the friction zone, starting and stopping, counterbalancing and counter steering, weaving in and out of cones, switching lanes, and swerving out of the way of an obstacle, I just want to focus on the more difficult parts that a lot of riders seem to struggle with or cause them to fail the course. First up is figure eights. Now I knew for a fact this was something that we'd be tested on, but I was still very nervous. But you'll do fine as long as you remember a few key things. Turn your head and look as you turn. Keep your eyes up and keep them looking straight. And use the rear brake and throttle to control your balance. The reason people tend to fall is they're either going too slow, not giving enough throttle, they're looking down at the ground, or they're not turning their head. You will go where you look, so if you're looking at the ground, you're going to end up on the ground. Next up is the abrupt stop. Now this is where they will time you to make sure you're at least going 15 to 20 miles per hour and then have you stop quickly. Then they will measure how far it took you to stop. Key tips for this is to use both the front and rear brakes. Also they will have a marker to indicate when you should start stopping. Do not slow down before the marker or they will dock down points. The last one I want to go over is turning at high speeds. Just make sure again you're keeping your head up, your eyes up, and you're turning your head in the direction that you want the bike to go. They're also going to teach you how to stop in a curve and focusing on how to maintain control while stopping in a curve. The best practice for this is in a curve you should straighten out your handlebars before you apply the front brake. If you try to apply the front brake while your front tire or your handlebars are turned, you will most likely lose balance and drop the bike. And now we're on to the classroom part, and I know what you're thinking, boring, but this is really important, and you don't want to be the one that does so well on the writing portion and then fails the multiple choice test. You will be spending around seven hours in the classroom learning about things in the MSF booklet that you will be tested on in the multiple choice test. Now there's not too much advice I can give besides just pay attention in class. You can even take notes if you'd like to inside the booklet, but for the most part the teachers are very helpful. They will emphasize certain key facts and notes for you to keep in mind because it may or may May not be on the test. And also if you've already taken the permit test at the DMV, those questions are pretty much the same. For my course, it was only 25 multiple choice questions and you're allowed to get seven wrong and still pass. And if you want even more practice, Dan Dan the Fireman has this great video on YouTube where he does this online MSF test walkthrough. So I recommend checking that out if you're interested. Now we're going to get into the preparation for the course. What to bring and what to wear. And we're going to go over some common misconceptions. You do not need your motorcycle permit in order to take this course. You can take this course with absolutely zero motorcycle experience or knowledge. Also the cost of this course varies within different states. I think it ranges from 50 to a couple hundred dollars. For me personally, it was free. Well, technically, it was given to me as a free voucher when I bought my motorcycle at my local dealership. They were able to throw that in with my purchase, which is actually pretty cool. Now, you do not need to buy your own motorcycle before taking the course. They are not required. They will supply you with motorcycles to ride when you take this class. Now, what you do need, however, is motorcycle gear. And it depends on the place you go to. Some places might have extra helmets that they can let you borrow, but there's no guarantee that they're going to have the right size for you. So 
the following gear is a requirement and you must be wearing it at all times when you're riding the bikes. And they will not let you ride the bikes unless you have this gear, so this is super important. Your helmet can be a full face or it can be a three quarter. If it is a three quarter and it does not have eye protection, you have to supply your own eye protection, so sunglasses or some sort of face shield. You need a long sleeve shirt or jacket. It does not have to be motorcycle specific, like it doesn't have to be a riding jacket or anything, but something that covers your arms. You need long pants that are durable, so denim or a thicker fabric. For the ladies, they will not accept leggings or any thin fabrics. You need over the ankle boots or shoes that are sturdy, and then you're gonna need full finger gloves. I would recommend bringing some water because these are going to be very long days, especially on the weekends. And another note for any of you shorter riders out there, I would give the place a call ahead of time to see if they have any bikes that are available for when you take the course that are lower to the ground. When I took the course, I had a few girls in my class that were shorter than me that got to take the smaller bikes and I was left with a bike that I kind of had to tippy toe to use. Thankfully it wasn't too bad but I did have another girl in the class that was left with a taller bike too and she was pretty short and she was kind of struggling but it's still good to call ahead and ask and just see if that that's something that they can accommodate. I was even talking to one of the instructors and saying that I had a Honda Rebel and he was saying oh man if you would have told me you had one we would have brought one out here so you could practice on that bike and that would have been cool to practice on a bike similar to one that I already owned. And here are some final thoughts. As intimidating as it might seem, you really have nothing to worry about because it's very easy to pass this course. Everyone passed it in my class with no problems at all, even the guy that dropped his bike during the training. Dropping your bike during the final skills test is the only way to automatically fail. That or doing some crazy maneuvers that put you or other riders in danger. Otherwise, they're pretty lenient on the mistakes that you can make. For example, they will mark you down on points, but you can put your feet down a few times if you need to in turns, you can stall the bike a few times, and even go outside the lines during the test and you're still able to pass. But with that being said, just because you passed the MSF course, it doesn't make you an expert motorcycle rider. I was kind of shocked with how many people passed and are now able to go out into the open roads. So keep practicing the skills that you learn in this course so that you feel confident riding out in traffic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful for any new riders out there. If there are some things that I missed that you have questions about, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want even more tips, I have a series of videos where I practice drills and prepare for the MSF course, and I also have a vlog of my experience while taking it. As always, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your motorcycle journey. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. There's been a dude in a car right behind the camera that's been watching me this entire time. Why did that car just drive in here? Sus. Don't stall it. <laughs> Silly goose.